Hey everyone, and welcome to the third episode of my Pokemath series, where I'll be making short videos on some of the maths behind Pokemon game mechanics. In this episode, we'll be dealing with accuracy in Generation 1. Accuracy plays a huge role in Pokemon. It can be a way to hold high power moves back from being too overpowered. It can be a way to allow frail Pokemon to evade enemy attacks long enough to actually have an impact in the battle. And also it can be a way to make me rage. God damn it, you bloody Sandshrew, I hate you! So let's start off with the accuracy of the move. Almost every move that affects the opponent has an accuracy associated with it. Swift and Bide don't, but I'll talk about them in a bit. Moves that affect the enemy can be damage dealing, like Scratch or Hydro Pump, ones that affect the enemy's stats, like Growl or Leer, or ones that apply status conditions, like Thunder Wave or Sing. Moves that affect the user don't have an accuracy, and so are not impacted by accuracy checks. After 6 sand attacks, Kakuna will still be able to harden 100% of the time. So as with most calculations in Generation 1, we'll be looking at numbers from 0 to 255. The reason this is so persistent across the game is that the numbers in the game are stored in bytes. One byte is 8 bits, and a bit can be either a 1 or a 0. The largest value that can be stored on a byte is 255, which is 8 ones in binary. The smallest value that can be stored is 0 which is eight zeros. And so in most of our calculations, we have 256 possible outcomes. A move's accuracy is a number between zero and 100, because that's human readable. If we're told something is 90% accurate, we understand that nine times out of 10, it should hit. Now we need to scale that up to our zero to 255 range. So basically, we just need to multiply our accuracy percentage by 255. We then produce a random number between 0 and 255, and if that number is less than our modified accuracy value, then the move hits. Easy as that. Looking at the move Rock Throw as an opportunity for me to correct the mistake I made in my damage calculation video, Rock Throw has an accuracy of 65% in Generation 1. This means our modified move accuracy is 0 0.65 times 255, which is 165.75. But as we always round down to whole numbers, this is actually 165. Thanks to the rounding down and the fact that our random number has 256 possible values, most moves are actually a little less accurate than they say they are, as Rock Throw has a 165 in 256 chance to hit, which is 64.4%. The random number is generated, and if the value is less than 165, Rock Throw lands. If it's equal to 165 or greater than 165, we miss. This brings us on to an interesting point. Let's look at an 100% accurate move like Body Slam. Our modified accuracy value would be 1 times 255, which is 255. We then roll our random number from 0 to 255, and if our number is less than 255, we hit. The key thing here is that we're explicitly checking if R is less than A, not less than or equal to. So if we roll 255 as our random number, 255 is not less than 255, so we miss which means there's a 1 in 256 chance to miss an 100% accurate move, even if no accuracy or evasion modifiers have been applied. You'll have heard this referred to as the 1 in 256 glitch, or a Gen 1 miss. Rather than mindlessly resetting until I get a Gen 1 miss myself, here's one that Steve M plays encountered, missing his 100% accurate ice beam during an Omanyte solo challenge. This Gen 1 quirk finds itself in a few of the calculations we'll be looking into in this series, including guaranteed critical hits which we covered last time. The 1 in 256 glitch is why a Karate Chopping Primeape is only 99.6% likely to land a critical hit. Alright, so we've got our moves accuracy calculated, but this can be increased or decreased depending on a few other battle mechanics. Evasion is one way a moves accuracy can be modified. If your enemy is spamming double team, then they'll be harder and harder to hit. Evasion boosting moves affect the user's evasion in the following way. Each time the user uses Double Team or Minimize, their evasion stage increases by 1, and the new evasion modifier is applied to the accuracy equation. If I'm now trying to rock throw a Raichu that's used Double Team 4 times, my accuracy value will be 165 times 33 over 100, which is 54.45, which gets rounded down to 54. This gives our Onyx a 21% chance to hit. In Generation 1, there are no items or moves which decrease evasion, so if your enemy starts using these moves, act fast. Accuracy stat changes are another way a move's accuracy can be modified. Having a face full of smoke or sand will make it harder to land your attacks. Accuracy stat changing moves affect accuracy in the following way. 
Each time we are hit with a sound attack, smokescreen, kinesis, or flash, our accuracy stage decreases by one, and the new accuracy modifier is applied to the accuracy equation. Accuracy changes stack with evasion changes. So let's say my Gyarados has been smokescreened twice and is trying to use Hydro Bump against a muck that has minimized six times. Our accuracy total would be 204 times 25 over 100 times 50 over 100, which is 25.5, rounded down to 25, giving our Gyarados just under a 10% chance to hit. There are no moves that increase accuracy in Generation 1, but there is an item, X Accuracy. X Accuracy is just like the other X items, in that its description says it increases their associated stat by one stage. But where X Accuracy differs from the others is that it's incredibly broken. X Accuracy doesn't increase the accuracy stat by one stage like it says it does, instead it allows your Pokemon to bypass all accuracy checks for pretty much all moves. So our Nidoking King can be sand attacked six times, the enemy can double team six times, and if we've used a single X Accuracy, we will land any hit we choose. It's this exploit that Gen 1 speedrunners took advantage of. A very low accuracy move like Horn Drill can become a game changer if it never misses, as it's a one-hit KO against all Pokemon. And speaking of one-hit KO moves, they each have 30% accuracy when we aren't cheesing the game with broken items, but they're also met with an additional accuracy condition. They will only hit if the user's current speed is greater than or equal to the opponent's current speed. So have no fear, Jolteon. That Rhydon's never going to fissure you. And finally we have some special cases that decide if certain moves hit or miss, bypassing the accuracy calculation. Bide skips the accuracy checks entirely when unleashing its stored up energy. If the move is Dream Eater, the game checks if the enemy is asleep, because if the enemy is awake, regardless of evasion or accuracy, the move can't connect. Next was the move Swift, because if so, ignore every other check that follows. So Swift can't miss. It's immune to the 1 in 256 glitch, and can even hit Pokemon whilst in the air during fly, or in the ground during dig. Our next check is if the enemy is in the air or underground, in which case, if you aren't using Swift, you miss. Is the move missed in play, in which case, any stat lowering moves you use will miss. Has X accuracy been used, and if so, hit. So even the X accuracy exploit is immune to the 1 in 256 glitch. And then finally after all of that, if we haven't already missed or hit based on the above criteria, we do the accuracy equation. There's also a bunch of rules around when a substitute is used, but I think there's enough there to warrant its own video. So I'll just end with the final final fact, that any moves used by the opponent which count as a stat modifier down move, for example growl, leer, sand attack, after the accuracy check is complete and the move has been calculated to hit, they have to make it past an additional 25% chance to miss. So an enemy sand true with 100% accuracy will miss 25% of its sand attacks. To which I say, not good enough. Thanks for watching. I hope you learned something because I definitely did. If there's any game mechanic you'd like me to do an episode on then please let me know. Next time I'll be looking at a request from RBY Pokemon Challenges for me to do a deep dive into how the sleep and confusion statuses work and to find out in what situations it would be better to use Sing or Confuse Ray. See ya!